just few. And don't be late. All right, folks, we're going to go back to Matt in California. Then we're going to play some of this Earth 2100 that aired on, uh, I think it was ABC last week. I believe on Wednesday. It was June 2nd, so maybe it was a week ago. Actually, I guess it would have been on a Tuesday then. Tuesday, last week, caused a lot of controversy. Wasn't able to get an actual high-quality version until the weekend. And what I saw just just floored me, folks, just floored me. All right, Matt, what else you got? Um, well, it was. I just wanted to talk about that uh, interview. But also, I've been reading Margaret Sanger's uh, Women and the New Race. Mm-hmm. And, and I was reading this quote where she actually says, uh, while there are cases when even the law recognizes a, recognizes an abortion as justifiable if recommended by a physician, I assert that the hundreds of thousands of abortions performed in, the, in America each year are a disgrace to civilization. So one, one, on one hand, we have this psychopath saying that abortions are bad, but on the other hand, she advocates sterilization of an entire race. Mm-hmm. So it really goes into how sick and psychopathic these people are, and it kind of ties in with the old climate change agenda that... I think people who, you know, blindly support global warming and what it actually is have, you know, a truly irrational hatred for the human race. And well, I, I, I got to you- agree with you. I mean, I've got this study right in front of me. Um, it's at, and the reason I said uh, NASA earlier because it's a NASA study, and it actually says the NASA study acknowledges that the solar cycle, not man, is actually the cause of climate change. And they show all sorts of uh, graphs. Here's the article. Some researchers believe that the solar cycle influences global climate change. Uh, global climate changes. They attribute recent warming trends to cyclic variation. Skeptics, though, argue that there is little hard evidence of a solar hand in recent climate changes. Now, a new research report from a surprising source may help to lay the skeptics to rest. A study from NASA's Goddard. Uh, or, I'm sorry, yeah, Goddard Space Flight Center in Greenbelt, Maryland, looking at climate data over the past century, has concluded that solar variation has made a significant impact on the Earth's climate. The report concludes that evidence for climate change based on solar radiation can be traced back as far as the Industrial Revolution. Past research has shown that the sun goes through 11-year cycles. At the cycle's peak, solar activity occurring near sunspots is particularly intense, basking the Earth in solar heat. According to Robert Callahan, a climatologist at the Go- of the Goddard Space Flight Center, Right now, we are uh, in between major ice ages in a period that has been called the Holocene. So again, this is not man-made. We cannot have an effect on the heat that comes into this planet. What we can have an effect on is what's in our water, what's in our soil, and what's in our air. But them demonizing CO2, and they demonize CO2 in this. They demonize coal hardcore in this. Yet again, remember, we're, peak oil's real, climate change is real. You know, later on in life, we are going to have to start spraying the sky with pollutants. It's all in this program. I thank you for the call, Matt. I, 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 I let you, but I got to play this clip. All right, let's, let's start it off. Let's play it from the very beginning. I'm going to be, you know, stopping it occasionally and uh, giving my comments on it. But this thing is just too crazy not to comment on. So we're going to go through. It gives you a little overview in the beginning. I'm going to hold it off there and really show you what this overview is preparing you for. And then uh, we're really going to get into it. Hit the clip. In my life. You just got to hit play again, guys. I've seen New York City under full quarantine. The Midwest overrun, devastated by pests. It's California. And then what happened next was something none of us saw coming. It became a race against time to save our future, to even have a future. It's the year 2100, and I survived. To change the future, first you have to imagine it. Earth 2100 starts now. All right, let's pause it. Now, this woman, born a week ago, she was born in 2009. Apparently, she is a 91-year-old woman. Doesn't sound like a 91-year-old woman. Doesn't matter. Because they get this really calm, assertive woman to tell you this story, someone you can sympathize with. They don't want an old woman telling it. You know, they, they want you to c- kind of displace time that this stuff could happen even sooner than they're saying. Because they start showing you that dragonflies are coming over. They're migrating because of the heat. It just gets into total insanity. But right now, what you're going to see is a news anchor, because this is kind of a news program. They intertwine actual news clips with their cartoon telling of this woman's story, intertwined with experts. So right now, this guy is going to prep you what this is all about. Oh, it seems unthinkable that our society could break down in this manner, but it could. Hit it. 
The idea that within this century, perhaps in your lifetime, our civilization could lie in ruins seems unbelievable. But according to some of the world's leading minds, that's not just a worst case scenario. It's a real possibility. Good evening, I'm Bob Woodruff. Over the next two hours, we'll take you on a journey into a world that could await us and our children. 370,000 babies will be born today. And we've taken the liberty of creating one more, a fictional character we're calling Lucy, who will be our guide through this century. Her life story is not a prediction about what will happen, but what might happen. This once glorious city, whose lights at night could be seen for miles, empty now. Its towering skyscrapers, once a testament to our ingenuity, now stand as crumbling monuments to our demise. Maybe only artists can grasp what that kind of future really holds for us. It's perhaps in the area that we think of today as science fiction, but that could be a very real future for the planet. Now let me pause it right here. A hundred years from now. If... The guy that, that was just talking apparently is an Obama administration appointee. He later, in a drill that he does with all these other international intellectuals, because this is about globalism. This is global government in motion. This is about, we need to re reduce our carbon footprint. And they say that very early on. They're prepping you for the kind of legislation that's coming out right now. Right now. And what's going to happen in the next four to five years. In fact, that guy plays a prominent role only six years from now in 2015, where he holds a conference where they decide that the U.S. has to give up 25% of their carbon emissions in a 30-year period. So this guy is on the inside of government. He is promoting this unbelievable agenda of where we have to sacrifice. We have to live in lower conditions. And as the, the uh, thing progresses, you're driving smaller cars. They're part of these railway systems. You don't have enough water. There's not enough food for everybody. Everybody's sacrificing. There's rations. It's just an everyday part of life. People are in the streets. You know, people actually get fired on on this from um, uh, military martial law personalities in an outbreak about 30 minutes in. And I'm not talking about a plague outbreak. Basically, they say the droughts are coming and you're going to have massive migrations of people and these people break out of the pens. What can we do but kill them? So right now, they're really just pre preparing you for this nightmare scenario. They showed you some pictures, if you're watching PrisonPlanet.tv, that are pretty much cartoon style of I Am Legend. You know, just vines growing over all the monuments, no people around, desolation, buses, you know, crashed and off to the side in pieces and rusted out. That's what they're showing you. They're basically showing you Armageddon only a hundred years from today. Hit it. New York is abandoned. Um, I can imagine some advanced creatures, maybe humans, maybe extraterrestrials, looking at New York and saying, those ignorant people, how on earth could they have ever expected to survive? I can ask myself what happened, but where do I begin? With the droughts, the famines, the plague? It began long before all that. I lived through it all. My story is everyone's story. Stop the it right story there. Of the last story of the last century is everyone's story. My story is everyone's story. Get ready to relate to me because this pertains to everybody. And remember what you just said, famines. Plagues, droughts, quarantines. That's everybody's story in the last century. And, you know, it shows a picture. Again, this is, this is very stylized propaganda. You know, it has that urban cartoon look in 3D, and it's kind of going off into the sunset of this woman who's telling you this story. And right now, she's in her childhood looking off into the distance. All right, can we, uh, can we continue to play the clip, guys? Let's hit it right here. Sure. I was born June 2nd, 2009. Civilization was at a crossroads. We were in a race for our future. 